Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer here. Going to be looking at a trailer for the upcoming Scourge of War Chancellorsville, um, which will be coming out sometime soon. Uh, I did a trailer review of Rome Total War 2, and now I'd like to do one for Chancellorsville. I've done several battles in the Scourge of War series, so uh, let's take a look at this newly released trailer. Alright, well, um, got to say that trailer is pretty exciting. Uh, the music did a great job of kind of building that epic feel up. Um, as we, as I'm talking, this is just a screen capture of a Scourge of War Gettysburg um, in the background here. First of all, one thing just to point out, that review, or that trailer, I'm sorry, was actually captured in, I believe, 480p, if you will, so it was less than HD. Um, they didn't upload an HD uh, render yet. Um, I would imagine it'll look, look much better. I mean, even the images that I'm showing here are 720, so um, should should look better than what the preview shows. Uh, I know they're working on a second preview, which they have said probably will have uh, HD on there. Um, so yeah, um, but onto the actual uh, substance of the actual trailer. First of all, the uh, biggest thing that stood out to me of substance was that wagon crossing over a little ways into it, over the river. Um, in Antietam and Gettysburg, they really didn't have uh, water graphics, to so to speak. It didn't really affect the uh, quality of the game, maybe more notably in Antietam, but um, it looked, you know, alright for the limited resolution that we got to see. It was definitely encouraging to see that there will be water involved, especially because the Battle of Chancellorsville was you know, fought along the Rappahannock River, um, and uh, the water was uh, definitely a factor, you know, with the fords and the bridges and all that. Um, on to some other stuff that wasn't really touched on in the review. Uh, the gameplay is going to be the same as what you're looking at here in Scourge of War Gettysburg. I mean, it's the same game. It's a map add-on, but it will also be standalone um, with... Uh, with their distribution through Matrix, so if you don't have Scourge of War Gettysburg, you don't have to go out and buy it and then buy the map pack. You'll actually be able to buy Chancellorsville as a standalone and then um, just play that, or if you want, if you already have Gettysburg, you can buy it as a map pack edition. I think that's kind of a unique thing that they're looking at doing, which should please both, you know, both segments of the crowd. It'll be interesting to see how that plays into multiplayer and if that creates any kind of, you know, conflicts when people are trying to make uh, games. But um, at the very least, it's a it's kind of a unique uh, way to approach a situation where some of your fans may already have the game and some new buyers may not have the previous game. It's a way to uh, expand into new avenues, uh, new new customers, without um, isolating your your old customers by charging full price for really what is a map edition. They are making some graphical enhancements. Um, from what I've heard, obviously the water being the most uh, significant. I think Chancellorsville is a good choice, personally. I know they've, some people have complained they've been focusing exclusively on eastern battles, what with Gettysburg, Antietam, South Mountain, Pipes Creek, that hypothetical battle, and then also with the previous uh, versions in the Mad Minute series where they took on 1st uh, and 2nd Manassas, or Bull Run, if you prefer. Um, 
But I think it makes sense. Chancellorsville is a very uh, iconic battle, um, the battle in which General Jackson was wounded by his own men and then killed. Um, probably had one of the most famous um, moments of the entire war, where Jackson's corps flank conducted a flank march and attacked the Union and their exposed flank. Um, it just, it's a very interesting uh, engagement. But I think the most encouraging thing for me about this, about them choosing Chancellorsville, they've already said that Fredericksburg will be included in a map because the Battle of Second Fredericksburg was um, not the bloody slaughter of First Fredericksburg, but Second Fredericksburg was an integral part of the, the Battle of um, Chancellorsville. So they're going to have a Chancellorsville map, they're going to have a Fredericksburg map. Now, the thing that stands out to me most is in an interview... Uh, with a French magazine, um, or French website, uh, the developer Norm Timpko said that their next big uh, overhaul, or next big project following Chancellorsville, will be to um, tie some battles together, or all of the battles together. Now, Chancellorsville gives them a unique opportunity to do that, because if you've got the Fredericksburg map, you've got Chancellorsville, you, you've got a, a good chunk of the surrounding area. If you're not familiar with the geography of the region, Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville are within a, a couple of miles of each other. And the Battle of the Wilderness was fought in 1864, just a couple of miles from there, and they're working on maps, and, and they've already demonstrated that maps can work at 5 to 10 square miles. So you could conceivably turn this into a campaign-style game where players could march cores here and there and launch attacks as they wish, and really the Chancellorsville, Fredericksburg, Wilderness area is the perfect area um, if you want to start something like that with interlocking battles to do something like that. So if they're getting the map work out of the way, this map add-on will get a lot of that work out of the way, save them time with future releases, and give them more options to tie battles together. Also, in addition to that, it fits in well with the battles they've already done. They've done Antietam, um, which was fought in late 1862. They're going to have Fredericksburg mapped, so they could easily you know, release a new order of battle with a few new skins and do Fredericksburg, which was late 1862. Then you go straight into the spring, which was Chancellorsville and 2nd Fredericksburg, which were fought in early 1863 on those same fields as are already covered because that's what the next map pack, it, map, map pack is, the Battle of Chancellorsville. And then you go straight from Chancellorsville into Gettysburg. So essentially you, you could literally directly link all of those battles together and include some elements of a campaign and carryover scenarios and the like and give players more dynamic control over the armies which I think would be, would, which would set this apart from being one of the best games out there to being one of the best games ever created. If you could have a strategic element added on to these ta amazing tactical level battles, you would have arguably the greatest computer game um, for the Civil War ever created. If you're not familiar with the Scourge of War series, I recommend you, you take a look at them. They're definitely far more detailed and accurate than the um, Total War series, which if you're watching this video and you've never played the game, you might think, oh, that looks a little bit like the Total War series. Well, not even close. I mean, Total War, I think you can get like 3,000 spirits on each army taking place in a battle. Um, I think they're up to a 4 to 1 ratio now, so basically what that means is in a battle like Gettysburg here, where you'd have 150,000 men engaged, uh, or actually it might have been like 170,000 men engaged, instead of having, you know, maybe 8,000 spirits total, you've actually got quite a bit more than that. You've got um, over 40,000 spirits engaged, um, it, you know, each individual character. I mean, these battles are absolutely epic. The maps are gorgeous, and um, things are only going to be getting better from here, and I'm, uh, I'm actually really excited to see what Chancellorsville comes of it. But I think, honestly, I'm more excited about what the geographic area of Chancellorsville could mean for this series. Um, you could go in, like I said, to the wilderness. You could then directly go into the Overland campaign. Um, some people, like I said, have criticized them for not going out west. But I think if you want to see a truly dynamic campaign game that could evolve from this, the Chancellorsville area is the best area to start because so many battles were fought so close from there. Um, and if you're getting into an area where you're mapping 10 square miles out, you're mapping out the two, you know, 
areas that have fought major battles, Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville on this release. You could release another release, which is just a few miles down the road. You could tie it all together, make one grand map, and you could just create so many options for going forward. And that appears to be what they may be doing. So, to kind of sum all this up, I was excited by the preview more because of the choice of Chancellorsville and the opportunities I think it presents. Um, Chancellorsville I'm looking forward to, um, but more than anything I'm looking forward to what this represents for the future of this series, which I would say is probably the best Civil War series ever created. If this is a game that you're interested in, check out the link in the description. I will have a link for the website for Scourge of War. Um, they just recently signed a publishing deal with Matrix Games, which is a, fam is, is a well-known wargaming publisher. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a great game. Check it out. I believe they have a demo up now on Scourge of War's website. And uh, until next time, everyone have a great day.